Welcome everybody to the Pirate Skills journey that this time is all about creating an evil content plan. Sounds diabolical, but it's actually my approach to content marketing for the good guys. The simple premise is I'm pissed that only people on the dark side of marketing, like online marketing douchebags, hopefully excluding myself, do have those perfect 27 email funnels, webinar opt-ins, perfect upsells. They have content for every piece of the customer journey. And I just miss this with so many of the good guys. So today I really want to show you everything. The content plan that, that starts from everything, from the traffic channels that you're using, how, how they affect the content planning, how you need to be very aware of the customer journey and the steps that people are going through and which kind of content formats are happening. It's, it's a whole big thing yeah, that you can grab all if you go to piratesgits.com slash evil dash plan. And I just want to go with you through this because when I started my journey in 2008, I actually started with content marketing and SEO without like being super aware of all of the nuances. And in those past 13, 14 years, I felt so many more strings tagged at, at my decisions when I built content plans for myself and for other people. And as you guys know, I'm, I'm starting a new company called HabitUp and I will use this as a continuing example of how to actually do it. And you will see it not only in the concepts, but in the real world with real numbers. I'm going to be extremely transparent about this. If, if that sounds awesome to you, go over to piratesgoods.com slash evil dash plan and, and download the slides, the mirror board, and later the finished recording of this. So what's the evil content plan? Let me switch over to my mirror board and go into the, the depth. Here you see a big plan that starts with the traffic channels to the customer journey, to the customer needs, to formats, to themes, to calendars, and even including ad campaigns. And this is set up in a way that on the left hand side is pretty much what you want to copy paste to build this for yourself. It's the template section where you have the rough draft of how it should look like for you. And on in the middle and the right, we have the concrete, fully built out example of how I would do it for my next up and coming startup habit up. And on the right hand side, you can see that we have additional resources, places I get and you can get inspired by and that, that helped me to research and, and a bit of my way of, of, of thinking around those topics. But at the end, if you follow through with this idea of creating your own evil content plan, and that is truly meant in the best way, I, I want to look at the next time when I look at an NGO's landing page to see like, fuck, they really thought about everything. Yeah, it, this has beginning and an end and i understand the steps in between i'm proud of them for doing that and they can now really push their impact uh, and their profits let's get started let's start with uh, part one so one of the questions while i was talking about this was ben why don't you start with the customer needs why why do you start with the traffic channels Yes, you can absolutely start with the customer needs as well, if that's your thing. But I always ask the question first, where are my customers? If you have some kind of customer avatar, put that above. Yeah, but the first question when creating our content is, where are our customers? And you might be familiar with the traffic channel uh, compass from Pirate Skills. You have a template here. Yeah, it, it simply explains like here are my, my, my own traffic channels. Here, let me just draw a little line around this here. This is what I personally own, like my website, my email list. Nobody can take this away. This is other people's traffic, like social media, Google search, something that where you depend on another platform that they can take it away. 
And paying a computer means generally like creating ads. And then we have paying a human like influencer marketing, affiliates, etc., partnership deals. And, and you want to have a nice balance and a very cohesive approach before you start your content plan here. Now, let me tell you the most important parts in my thinking on, on how I am setting up the traffic channels for, for Habit Up. I usually start in the lower left corner with my own channels. You have to read it like in the center of this traffic channel compass, there are the most important ones. So I will focus on those. And further out, they are either discarded or they are like a B priority. So what is the most important channel that I personally own for Habit Up? It's going to be um, newsletters, email marketing, sounds old school, is by far the highest converting e-commerce channel uh, that I set up. Once I found messenger channels that outperform those, I will let you know immediately. I'm gonna host events similar as I'm familiar with here with Pirate Skills, and I'm going to deliver online courses. So maybe as a little context, Habit Up is going to be a company that creates cool tools that help you to build better habits. The first product I want to release is a journal, like a physical journal, like a calendar, where you can track your habits Stop with the apps, get real, don't get distracted by digital mobile devices and, and work on one focus habit. Yeah, there's an example of one tool that I want to build. Accompanying that are going to be digital assets like online courses and events that people can host that connect people who are working on similar habits and want to support each other. So this is the core. On the second degree, we have, we have the blog. And we have this nice community building referral engine. I think getting people into events is really nice to build communities. And within communities, you have this nice engine of people recommending other users. So this is the organic foundation. So now what, what external platforms am I using to, to boost my reach? Because nobody knows what's happening, where Habit Up is putting up their stuff. So I need other people's platforms and I'm going to focus here on YouTube first, Instagram second, SEO third. This is the first difference from Pirate Skills. With Pirate Skills, I'm not very much focused on SEO because the volume of the keywords in the growth marketing scene are low and the competition is extremely competent and high. I try to avoid that and go through other channels. but. With habit forming, I'm pretty sure with my marketing background, I have a pretty big advantage in terms of SEO. And I want to be the one creating in-depth guides and articles with our, which are feeding into search engines. I think Instagram is the most important social media platform for the short term, but long term, it's going to be YouTube. And YouTube is a nice segue to a potential podcast about habit forming. And all of the other social platforms, they're just going to get copy paste love from Instagram. You already saw the question of how to save time uh, during content creation. One of my main tactics is to decide what is the focus channel, Instagram in this case, and the other channels until I have more resources in time, personnel and money. I pretty much copy paste that content to the other channels like LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok and Facebook. I'm also going to do a lot more with viral marketing and organic influencers. I love the pirate skills niche. Yeah, I'm never going to stop that. But it's small. People who love nerdy marketing, I love those guys to the death like you. Yeah, but we're small. We're a small community of people looking for mastery in a very narrow field while habit forming is a community of people looking for mastery in a gigantic field. So viral marketing and organic influencers are going to be viable. That is going to influence my content strategy, of course. Yeah, and so this, uh, the SEO forces articles, Instagram forces graphics, YouTube forces videos in my content strategy. Now, how can I jack up my traffic through 
paying a computer through ads. You already saw that I have YouTube. So of course I want to have YouTube ads. I have an Instagram channel, so I want to use Instagram ads. I have search and I'm focused on SEO and SEO and SEA, search engine advertising, they are brothers from another mother. They are like, I always think about it this way. I can test all of the keywords that I want to rank for on Google first on Google ads. This is where I can see, is there, are there good conversion rates? Is it worth putting in the immense amount of time and effort for ranking them up organically? But there is always keywords that I cannot reach. Or there are keywords that are so expensive on Google ads where I know I need to focus on SEO. Yeah, I just don't have another choice. So they, they keep on informing each other. This is at least my perspective on this. So this is why those lines go both ways. So we got those two, uh, we got those platforms. And of course I can try to boost up the other social media channels to their respective ads, but they are secondary priority. I believe there could be something happening with Outbrain. And of course, once you're on Google search and display ads, uh, you're not far away from shopping ads. This is going to be an e-commerce play and display ads, for example, for retargeting to get more and more people involved here. That is my boost strategy. So I already know I need to create content that is going to perform in those ad channels. Because in the beginning, beginning I have zero followers, I have zero traffic. I will need to boost some of the traffic yeah, to this, uh, to this brand new brand. And this is why if you, if you look way below at the end, we got our ad campaigns set up at least the, the creative part. Yeah. Not the whole targeting thing, but just what are people actually going to see? What is the messaging going to be? I'm thinking about it during my content marketing strategy. And I, that is a big mistake that a lot of companies are doing. They, they completely separate the organic and the paid path. And then I look at their organic channels and they, they maybe have 2000 followers, good engagement rates, interesting posts, but not a single post was promoted and they are way more engaging and better looking than the ads they are actually playing. So I try to immediately combine that and, and make it one thing. I hope my smarter moves with habit up is going to be the following. I want to ask influencers to create their version of this habit forming journal. Let's say I want to have a journal about doing regular yoga. Then I'm going to ask yoga influencers whether they want to create a digital asset for those people. And I would like them to put a link in their bio to their digital course that is accompanied by my physical product line. And so they can earn affiliate commissions. They can get a performance deal. They can get paid directly. And this creates this nice circle um, of influencers. I, I can help them. They can help me and we can build great brands with a big influence together. During my past one or two years, I've always thought about how can I build something so valuable that influencers would actually put it as the link in the bio. And the inspiration for that was one project I worked with called MyStyleClass. They are an online cooking course uh, platform that, that really gather extremely good cooks that can present and explain the topics very well. And all of those cooks now have an online course that they get a commission for. And of course, their link in the bio is redirecting directly to Meisterclass ID, which is genius. And, and all of those platforms that have built on this concept of how can I get the link in the bio, like OnlyFans, have completely blown up. Now, there are, of course, other places that I get inspiration by. So I suggest that if you are setting up your traffic channels, look how other successful people have set up their traffic channels. The most important player in the habit game at the moment is James Clear. 
and he has a blog that he has written for years is absolutely fantastic but he was also smart enough to build up an email list of hundreds of thousands of subscribers interested in that topic and if you land on his article page you can see of course he previews some articles like the 30 days to get better habits but the big call to action is not to read yet yeah but to first sign up and get like the first lesson it's it's really smart and he has a great newsletter he has a great blog that i'm inspired by and i would invite you to to keep on looking for people you respect and you look up to where you say like it doesn't even need to be in the same industry it would be even better if it was not in the same industry but where you can transfer something like i did from meister cluster to habit up so that is the first thing i think about what are your traffic channels because those ones at the center that you can see here you need good content format from that and once people click on your ads on your social media profiles on influencer affiliate links the customer journey starts this is why this is the next step let's move over to the template fundamentally the simplest way to think about the customer journey is you need a traffic source people need a place where they can convert like a website or a mobile app or a messenger and they can buy stuff but of course stuff is happening in between so how does it look like in real life it can be way more complex than that but habit up is still a young company the first task i have to do is to validate that my idea does not suck so how do i do that i've built a system for it i create social media ads i'm gonna focus on instagram those land on a wordpress landing page where i describe my idea and then they're gonna start a survey yeah uh, and not an outbrain but an outgrowth and they end up in an email list if they want to and that feeds the survey loop this gives me a great customer development platform where i can consistently test new value propositions new product features i can clearly define the mvp that i launch with i can even and this is especially important for me i can go beyond the current idea of building this journal series yeah i want to build all kinds of tools if people tell me that the best way they have tried to to improve their habits is getting a wrist brand with a certain icon on it then this is what i'm also going to develop now this is the idea of validation funnel very very simple very straightforward now we're getting ready for the e-commerce funnel and a bit more complex one. And I think this is maybe a better example for you guys. So traffic channels are going to be made way more diverse. The information comes from the traffic channel compass above. And we have our paid influencers and Instagram ads. We got this YouTube uh, bundle and we got the blog and SEO bundle. So three types of traffic that are going to my WordPress landing page, but then being spread to multiple lead magnets and those lead magnets can be things like free courses live streams or events as i mentioned or different downloadables and those get give people enough value that they are willing to stay in touch and give the contact data and those people land in my email marketing tool active campaign so why is this important for content marketing i now know i need to create content for emails People see this as, as a side project, but no, email is it's as valuable as your blog. I would say it's even way more valuable than your blog, where you're posting your best articles to. And then people uh, should be converting at some point in an online shop experience, uh, which I will use WooCommerce for. Yeah, so I know content-wise, I need to have ways to present my products, to describe them, awesome titles. And this is all part of the content strategy of the evil content plan. Now, the inspiration for this was, of course, the growth marketing treasure map, the R metrics, the landing page setup, the survey funnel building. If you are interested in how I'm doing those ID validations, this is the older version of how I'm doing it. But next month on March 2nd, I will launch a new video here on this channel where we show the most current version we are doing our idea validation setup with. 
and then you can pick it up for yourself. The interactive lead magnet, the lead nurturing part, and because it's such a similar company, Klarheit is a coaching calendar from Cologne that I absolutely look up to. I'm going to have lunch with the founder on Sandro, who's a friend of mine on Wednesday. And one of the funnels, one of the customer journeys that really worked well was to first give people the free PDF version. And the way we gave it to them was through social ads. And then they got in an email sequence where they got shown the value of Klarheit, the coaching calendar, and then they checked out about 25% out of a list of uh, 16,000 people that we built up in four months converted to customers within six weeks. Extremely fun. I hope I can repeat that feat. Here we got our input for the journey. So traffic is clear. The customer journey is clear. Now we get into the normal land where people think about when thinking about creating a content marketing strategy. And here you can already see that what I'm doing different is that I'm considering the traffic channels and journeys and that I'm going as far as including my ad campaigns within my content marketing plan. But the core content marketing planning is here in this area, which we are entering now with the customer needs. Now the customer needs in our template can be evolved from a couple of exercises that I recommend. In our content journey map, we recommend this simple exercise of asking yourself like, who are you helping? What are their core problems? Why are you the one who are, uh, should be helping them? And what is the solution that you are offering? And what is the transformational impact that you're doing for the customer and the world. Yeah, that is the most condensed storytelling framework that I could imagine and come up with. This was inspired by the story branding script by Donald Miller. And till today, I think this is one of the best frameworks out there and he is fully focused on creating that. And as you can see, I used it for habit up. But there are other things that you can do. And I'm going to go deeper into that because I use it for habit up and I'm going to show you what I was thinking there. The next best one I know is from Alexander Osterwalder and his company Strategizer called the Value Proposition Canvas. Most of you are familiar with the business model canvas. And if you pretty much like zoom in to the value proposition in the customer segments, this is where you can get those questions answered. You want to be very clear what a customer can gain and, and how, how it releases pain. Yeah, it's just classic carrot and stick thinking. So thinking about what people can gain from using your product and what, what pains they can avoid. And this results into customer jobs. Like the thinking here is that your customer hires your product to get a job done that they don't want to do themselves or it's more efficient to use your product for that or it might be even the only solution for it. So thinking in this kind of jobs to be done model is fantastic when you're creating your content marketing. You can talk all day long how this product of yours and service of yours solves different jobs that your customer has hired that product for. You can focus on the gains and the pains. You can see what works better in advertising. Does it work better when you're positive? Does it work better when you focus on the negative? And that totally depends on the audience that you're targeting and the specific person in that audience. And this is, this is how you can really dial down your messaging. What does it mean for, for Habit Up and this wonderful brand script from Donald Miller? All of this is based on a framework that pretty much all stories are told the same. You have a character who wants something, but he has a problem getting, getting that, what he wants. And then he meets a guide. Imagine like Luke Skywalker meeting Yoda and Obi-Wan. And they give him a plan of action and tell them, you got to do it because if you do it, you're going to save the universe. Otherwise, the rebellion is going to be squashed. Yeah, that, that is the fundamental idea. And I just, I love it how much content ideas I just generate automatically 
once I filled out and got clear on each part of that. What my core customer from Habitup wants is the following statement. I know what to do, but I don't know how to get myself to do it. Here at Pirate Skills, we, we teach a lot of things. And I think all of the marketing knowledge, it's already out there. The, the question is how to get yourself to apply, to gain experience, to improve it, to personalize it to your own needs. Knowledge is not the problem these days. Getting yourself to actually apply it is the hard one. And that is, that is the want that, that I'm going after. And the problem is that is in between the, my own ability to get myself to do anything I want to do is our like external problems like everyday life gets in the way we are all busy we get distracted we we don't we think we don't have the right stuff or equipment all kinds of bullshit yeah but we also have internal struggles like i don't have enough time i don't have the mental capacity the the energy uh, or i feel like i'm a procrastinator and i keep on pushing a project like that further and further away uh, or the thinking of, oh, God, I've, I've really tried everything, but it doesn't work. It feels like pushing up a rock up the hill. And at the very top, like in the Sisyphus story, it just rolls back down and I have to keep on doing this job for the rest of my life, never getting really over the hill and finally experiencing how life it could be if it was easy. All of these bullet points, they open up the world for articles for videos, for social media posts, for quotes, for book recommendations, for interviews with authors. This is one of my main sources of content inspiration. The problems that people have and my ability to hopefully solve those problems for them. This is one of the most underrated parts of this story branding framework. Realizing that we as founders and marketers, we should never put ourselves in the position of the hero of the story. Yeah, if, if I'm telling you, because of me, you're gonna build the best habits in the world. I, I'm gonna be just put up as some arrogant bastard and you're gonna leave. What, what you wanna do is show empathy and understand that I know how you're feeling, I've made my own experience and authority that you know that you have done this before, that you have solved it several times and that it's believable that you can solve it for somebody else. And then let the person, let your customer be the hero of the story. Position yourself as the guide who helps them to get there, who just gets them one step closer to their goal. And all of my content marketing focuses on getting people one step closer from where they are to where they want to go. Now we have to call them to action. Yeah, we have to give them a plan like, hey, you can join this community, you can download something for free, you can use this journal to really implement habits strongly into your life. And then tell them either buy my stuff or if you're not ready for that, how about you start a quiz that that analyzes your personality to find out what kind of habit forming approach works best for you or sign up for like a monthly newsletter or something like that, like transitional call to actions. And then the fun part, making it abundantly clear what the consequences are of actions. This is the, this is the main difference between stories, good written stories and boring B2B articles. They just do not really show me what's what's happening once I succeed and they are not making it abundantly clear what, what would be tragic. Imagine you can get yourself to do anything you want to do. You know what you're doing. You can also get yourself to do it. You could finally get unstuck. You can achieve any goal that is in your ability. You can stick with your habits longer. You can learn habits uh, easier and easier and you can find what really personally works for you. But if you do not follow the plan, you have, you can, we will never know what life could have really looked like if you would have stuck with your good habits.
You're going to be stuck in the old problems forever. You're going to waste your life and you're going to miss the opportunities that you have. Yeah, in dating, there is always this thing like, okay, what if you just find the person of your dreams, but you were not prepared? And they just pass you by because you didn't measure up. Yeah, this idea of being tragic if you do not follow through with what needs to be done. You already know what needs to be done, but can you get yourself to do it? So this framework, if I look at it, I get, I don't know, I get like 30 article ideas like, like this. Yeah, and I hope this inspires you as well. All of those framework mentioned in, in the template can help you get there. Do all three of them. Yeah, the left one, our own from Pirate Skills, it's the simplest one. The story branding script is the one most in depth with storytelling and content marketing focus. And the value proposition canvas is the most business oriented one. And yeah, feel free to just follow those links I put in the tool that Donald Miller is providing and the links to the resources from Strategizer themselves so you can download the most current version. So now we are clear on the customer needs. And I think this is truly the core of content marketing, understanding what, what they want and your position as a guide to solve that problem. And all of your content marketing should be about that. So some themes should appear like topics that you know you need to position yourself as an expert, as a thought leader, to be perceived as empathetic and as an authority in that field. I usually create a mind map like this. And for if I have it up, it's pretty easy. My main focus is going to be improving our ability to form good habits. That, of course, is done if I talk about all the topics of how to build stronger habits, all of the techniques, the tactics, the tools. Then this is also something a bit special about Habit Up. We're going to be very focused on solving specific habits. You can't get yourself to get up at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, or whatever time you choose for yourself to get up. Let's solve that problem and, and write specific guides and specific journals just for that. You have problems um, eating healthy food. Okay, let's solve that specific one. What as, who are the experts in that field? Can we interview them? Can we get them to create content that helps you? Now, there are a ton of habit building tools out there, mobile apps, calendars, um, vision boards, stuff that you can put on your, on your wristbands and all that good stuff. And I wanna talk about this, experiment with them and see what actually works. I definitely do not want to position only the Habit Up products, but be the go-to resources for people who want to improve that. And then, of course, the science of, of habit forming. I studied psychology and I can tell you there are like 32,000 uh, published articles on this topic of, of habit forming only on PubMed. And they are constantly being uh, published. And uh, what I do, let's look on that on the inspiration board, I set up a couple of categories of where I collect all of that information. And here in the lower right, you see the research and, and let me try to, to just open the, the PubMed form so you can see the madness going on here. And maybe I can show you the iPad, but here you see 30, 342,000 results. Yeah, of course, the, the last 200,000 not gonna be a good match but it's just ridiculous how much science there already is going on uh, for this topic. And of course, people have written books, as I mentioned, Atomic Habits, The Art of Learning from Joshua Waitzkin, Anything You Want from Derek Sivers. Those are not just random books. Those are the ones that I've read that have resonated with me the most. And, and you should be looking at all of the books in your area of expertise and see who is delivering concepts that are truly resonating with your audience. I don't want you to steal any of that, but you need to be very aware of who's already out there, what their frameworks are, and see them as partners in your journey of solving a common problem. Now, of course, there are a gazillion websites out there, uh, um, like to mention Derek Sivers or Wait But Why from Tim Urban. 
this is those two blogs are still like the last two blogs that I think are absolutely irreplaceable uh, for me by anything like YouTube channels or podcasts. Most of my attention moved towards YouTube, but those two blogs I just love to read. And I want habitup.com to be such a resource. And there, of course, are a gazillion mobile apps. And you just keep on categorizing and picking the best people uh, that you know in your area. And you will see what kind of themes will pop up with them. And of course, this has to be extremely differentiated in all kinds of lanes. Yeah, we, we cannot just look at those four big topics. They're going to be like 20 subtopics uh, here. And of course, I cannot cover them all at once. But over time, when I look at the library that we put up at Pirate Skills within the past five years, I, I see that this is this content marketing thing. It's it's a marathon. It's It's not a sprint. It's about thinking about what are the next 100 articles you are going to publish. But the next 100 videos on your YouTube channel, it's not about the social media post tomorrow. Now that we understood the themes that are the, the overarching topics that position you as an expert, you now need to think about, yeah, depending again on the traffic channels that you have chosen, what are appropriate formats that people are going to want to consume your information in. And in the template, I, I keep on reminding you, hopefully, that you have at least three stages of your customers, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, and bottom of the funnel. The simplest version is generating traffic, doing converting them some, somehow on your website, engaging them, and having them purchase something. And from our content journey map, we have a gazillion of format ideas from giveaways to articles, podcast episodes, and bitch about X posts. Here you can just use this as a buffet, like I used it for Habit Up, to, to decide what are the key types of content, the content formats that you want to publish on a regular basis. And this is very much depending dependent on, on your traffic channels and the customer journey. Now you see why I wanted to solve those first because I didn't want to interrupt the core content marketing workflow and I want to handle those before. So now I know on the left-hand side, this is my idea validation uh, funnel. Yeah. And this is my, my e-com funnel. And I need good content formats that engage people. Now that you know your funnel, you have to create content that is easy to consume for the top of the funnel, for people who are not yet aware of the problem. And the content formats I decided to create are videos that explain a core concept in my niche of habit building in, for example, 60 seconds. Why 60 seconds? It's awesome for stories. It's good for reels. It's good for TikTok. Yeah, it, it fits there. People can consume it and it's not such a high commitment to create it and to consume it. Then the second one is personal habit insights. I don't want to build a random faceless brand. Habit forming is so essential to the core of my own being that that I want to share all of my own experiments. And I hope that is interesting. Yeah, for the habit journey, uh, for the habit forming journey. If this turns out to suck and people just don't give a fuck, which I do not expect to happen. Yeah, otherwise it would not be on this board. Then I can just exchange that. But I'm willing to put myself out there and to risk and fail in public. So weekly challenges. The next one to get people engaged and pillar articles like deep in-depth uh, articles that are that are supporting the fundamental core beliefs and science and methodology behind what we are doing in the weekly challenges so habit forming is so it, it just lends itself so much to this idea of very regular challenges of of being together in this boat of struggling to getting oneself to do what we actually need to do and, and to give people a weekly or at least a monthly, I'm still considering like weekly or monthly or maybe doing both, 
challenges where people know they can jump back on the bandwagon. Okay, it's Monday again. It's the first of the month again. And I can join the community and everybody who is doing that and who is committed to start. Of course, they could start at any point in the week. Yeah, and you don't have to wait for the January 1st or your birthday to do things. But there is a certain energy that I want to use there. And of course, I, I know that I have Instagram, so I have insightful graphics as, as one of the next most important content formats. Now, I think I can use those formats to get people interested, to get people curious. Now, what if they're curious and they want to commit a bit more? Then I have user surveys, monthly events that they can join, join similar like this year. I can create resources lists like these are the best podcasts, the best books, the best tools, the best websites that you can go to to learn more about habit forming or to study a specific habit. And I want to create free courses myself plus with influencers that people are interested in, in listening to that truly help them solve very specific problems or achieve very specific goals. This is still the free lane. Yeah, they are interested now. They, they raise their hand again by saying, I'm willing to commit by an engagement in something more interactive. Now, how do I close them? Uh, how do I get them to, to buy at some point? I believe buying is a function of trust. If people truly believe that you can solve the problem and if you offer a solution at a price that is a no-brainer for them, they're going to buy from you. And I think the newsletter is my most important conversion met, uh, thing. Then an involvement of users in the product creation and a straight on product pitch by my stuff. Yeah? And those formats are going to be the cornerstones that are filling up my content calendar, the, the publishing plan that I want to have to be on track for my content marketing on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So those are the formats. If you want inspiration, there are so many interesting formats. And if, if you see great formats that are missing on this list, please let me know and I will add a nice post-it for that. Now, we got two more steps to do. We now take everything that we have learned from all the steps above and put it into a cohesive content calendar that tells me when I should be publishing what type of content. Yeah, let's, I, what I usually create is a typical monthly schedule. Here is your template. Every lane represents a different channel that you can plan for can post once a month and you can post 60 posts per month. It's, it's your decision. Here is my plan on how I will do it for Habit Up and how I, how I would recommend it for most brands today. I usually start with the high frequency channels like Instagram and the other social media platforms like Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Um, I want to get a certain yeah, type of series of events going. So here you can see that there is always this four pack of content happening here. And this is the most important piece of my content concept. I will create a pillar article twice a month. Yeah, so every other week. I have very limited time. I wish I could do it twice a week. I just cannot. This is what is reasonably the maximum for me. And if this is working out, I'm going to hire more people who to write and to create videos and all that kind of stuff. These articles are going to be the foundation for a video. The video is going to be an in-depth explanation of the core concept in the article. Those two things are going to go in the newsletter. Yeah, this is this part here. And I'm going to do like a little summary version of that. that teases people to watch the longer one in this explain X in 60 seconds video type. And this is going out at the beginning of the week in the first and the third week of the month. This can change very easily to the second and fourth week because of realities with pirate skills that are also doing stuff in those weeks. 
Now, the second video, special because it's going to be a YouTube live stream. Again, foundation going to be an article, very important for my SEO efforts and for sorting my, my brain. And something that I've sorely missed doing with Pirate Skills, I, I love writing. Yeah, and one of the habits I want to get back into is, is to, to use more time for writing. I just journal for myself personally, very frequently, but putting everything that I'm thinking in writing and not just in videos, it's going to be immensely helpful for myself, for the people consuming the content, for the search engines, for traffic generation. So instead of doing a normal YouTube video, this is going to be a YouTube live stream. And of course, this is around this monthly event. I've made the best experience in just creating one event a month to get people like you together. And hopefully we can do it offline at some point. But until then, I'm going to have online events only and force myself to create content. In March, next month, actually this time is the sixth anniversary, the sixth year, we have done a monthly event on the first Wednesday of the month, or at least in that week. And we have not missed a single time in fucking six years. And I can tell you how much I struggled before that with writing blogs, with publishing content. But I'm going to look stupid if I show up here with nothing awesome to show. I'm going to I'm going to take the time. Like This is my second most important I'm saving hack. Words myself to do it because I look stupid if I don't. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous, but six years, no fail. There is something there and I'm by God, not the most consistent guy. And I love procrastination. Yeah, but this really, truly worked for me. This is my number one most important piece of content that I can rely on is actually going out. This one is my second most important one. I give this a 60% chance of actually happening. I know I need to do it. I do not know yet how to get myself to do it. Maybe that's a public habit of challenge that I'm starting. So these are the core content pieces that are going out. What else do I have? A big monthly challenge. Yeah, that fits together with my list. So I just looked at this list. What haven't I put in my content calendar yet? Oh yeah, the challenge. Yeah, come on, let's do a big monthly challenge. Yeah, we, 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 I did this with Christina and we were like, okay, weekly challenges, that's probably too much, too much hassle. So how about we just do one big monthly challenge and if that runs really well, we can try weekly. Next one is personal habit insights, the purple ones. And you can see that the personal habit insights is going to be a weekly thing. Yeah, somewhere where I pick up a concept that has resonated deeply with me that I think is important to the audience that I explain from my own perspective, from my own experience and what has helped me. And then I leave a fourth spot to what I call Zeitgeist post. That essentially is a flexible spot where, where the person who supports you with content, where you yourself can do something that is feels right at this point, at this point in time. It might be Valentine, it might be a seasonal post, it might be something that happened in the news, a current trend that you observed, a thought, a fight that you had that inspires you to, to post this very zeitgeisty thing. Yeah, and, and I encourage you to keep one of those slots in your week, which makes it also very much, very easy to plan. So next week is personal habit insights again, and then now another content piece. You saw in the first week, the special thing was the big monthly challenge. In the second week, the special is insightful graphic. I want to create visuals that explain core habit concept very easily. Like when I read um, Charles Duick's Power of Habit, he has a great visualization of the habit loop. And this graphic just stuck in my mind. I want to create those kinds of graphics for people to more easily digest and be able to perceive and observe their own behavior and to be able to then change something about it. And then I'm going to do a blatant product pitch. Yeah, of course I have to fit those in. Yeah, you can see that I only do one per month. That is not enough actually, but I plan to, as you saw in my Tofu Mofu Bofu setup, 
that the product pitches are not meant to be on social media, actually. I'm just going to put one in there. But the main product pitches are happening in the email list, maybe in some kind of events, that kind of stuff. So that is the, the second week. The third week has the monthly event as the core thing, which I already explained, but nothing special that you haven't seen before. Just the explainer of explaining X in 60 seconds repeats. So you see that I love repeating content formats to have it simple for myself and for the people who support me in my content marketing efforts. And then in the last week of the month, we share another lead magnet, resource list, which is something very different than the graphic, different than the challenge. So every week I try to choose a different value format. Every week gets a video. I'm very bullish on creating a lot of video content. But in addition to that, some non-video content that people will receive value that moves them from A to B in the customer journey. And now that's it. You might be asking like, oh yeah, there are actually two product pitches in there. I like that. I like that much better. Two product pitches a month is just the bare minimum. Now the question is now, what is the core topic of the month? Those were not concrete post ideas. But how to get them? What I tend to do is decide that the topic of the month is a core habit, for example, like getting up early in the morning. And most of the content is going to be around that core topic. The event is going to be about that, the second YouTube video, maybe the interview that I'm doing there, um, the explainer videos, the, the quiz, the guide, whatever I'm creating, the resource list. This content calendar is essentially just the blueprint for a typical month. And then I can, I can define a core topic either on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. And it's very easy for me to fill that up as long as I think about what problem am I actually solving. Now, I, of course, I don't only have Instagram. I have YouTube and I've realized from Pirate Skills that posting just one video per month is not doing it. Yeah, I'm celebrating 1,640 uh, followers now, which is ridiculously little. Like when I created B2C channels like CSGO skills, we had 10,000 followers, subscribers in four months with uploading two videos and just promoting them. Yeah, that was so simple. If we have created weekly videos, it would have completely blown up. I'm certain of that. So. I'm increasing that frequency. I'm writing one article on the website and blog every other week. And in the other weeks, I'm creating landing pages for specific audiences, improving them for SEO. So this part is of course done for SEO purposes, uh, writing good articles, creating good landing pages for specific audiences and target groups and special needs, and then publishing the core content in newsletters on the first and third week of the month, we have a newsletter, which also includes a call to action for people to participate in the user voting, which influences which products I'm going to build first and how I'm going to build them. And in the other weeks, second and fourth week, I'm gonna have an evergreen series where I pull people to the most valuable content I have created in the past. Now we have influencers, we want to have a weekly push with influencers. The first week is gonna be an event push because it's two weeks before the event. That is the ideal time to push the event. The second week is gonna be a free course push. The, th the third week is gonna be a straight product push. And the fourth week is gonna be a challenge push. And this is probably going to change the most based on the experience that I'm making and seeing what works and what doesn't. But as I said, I'm also including not only influencers, but ad campaign in my content plan. I have noticed that if I do not make content creation for my ads a priority and put that into my weekly schedule, it does not happen. I create a lot of organic content, but I forget to promote them. So at the, in the first week, I'm going to create an event campaign. In the second week, a free course campaign. In the third week, a paid product campaign. And in the third week, a challenge campaign. And if I've already done that in the past, I'm going to significantly improve it and create a new challenger for that type of campaign. Maybe in a different channel, maybe in the same channel with a different placement, 
on new creatives. Which leads us to the last part. But just let me show you what I would do to get inspiration. Create screenshots from the brand you love the most, who you respect, who create the content in the way that you hope to be able to do it. For me, in Instagram, it's a company like Klarheit. On YouTube, it's YouTube channels like Ali Abdal. And in articles, it's people like James Clear. Look for people you look up to and it and, and screenshot and link the best articles and posts you can find. This will help your content team immensely to create ads and content pieces that are on a different level of quality than you have seen before. To round things up after one hour, just go quick and show you what I do with the ads. I have the ads showroom template up here where we essentially want to showcase the ads that we want to use for our ad campaigns. For our idea validation, we're going to use creatives like this. Single images that have a single message that is not animated whatsoever. So this could be something like, why is habit building so hard? Get people interested with that. What if you could build any habit? Let's build habits and the best habit tools together. I hope this one works, works out really great. And if you could, could build any habit, which would it be as an engagement focused message? And I can create 50 of those types of messages and I can now test in my ad, in, in, in the ads manager, which one has the highest click through rates and the highest conversion rates in the participation in the idea validation surveys. Now, of course, I can take those videos and I can take those pictures, animate them and create a simple video for that. Let me show you. Let's see if this works. Why is habit building so hard? We want to change habit building with you forever. Let's build the best habit tools together. Now, and, and I can change that. I can put videos of myself in here. But creating such a simple video has a couple of advantages. We know that the news, uh, that especially the story feed on Instagram is one of the most valuable places that currently are on the web because there are for some wild reason not enough advertisers on this placement. But if you post a single image, it will only show an image for five seconds in a normal Instagram story. But if you put a video, it will show up to 15 seconds. But if you put it into a carousel, it will show it for up to three times 15 seconds. But here we are not at the story level yet. Here we are at the image carousels. You can see that I can try different formats and I don't know which one is going to perform best yet. It might be the single images, it might be the video, it might be a carousel that shows three messages in sequence in different formats. And I can use this showroom as a place where, where I can start my tests from and where I can inform the people who are creating those ads, including myself, what is actually working and what is not working. This is why we set up this evaluation sheet, but you can check this out in the ads showroom where I explained this in, in full detail. For, for inspiration, I look at something that is called the, uh, the Facebook ads library. I actually linked it up here. If you go to the top of this post, you can tap uh, on the Facebook icon and that leads you here, this, this icon at the top here, that leads, that leads you to the ads library, which actually shows the currently running ads of any Facebook and Instagram page. Here you can see current running ads from Klarheit. Then I use Canva to create those ads. First of all, Canva has great templates and I use my own design guides to quickly create multiple versions of an ad. If you want to check it out, here is also a template linked behind this image that you can just copy for yourself. If you press on the link, it looks like this and you can just import this template to your own account. And then, of course, there are other places like the Facebook ad library from Ad Espresso, 
where you can see from multiple industries exceptional good designed and and texted ads and then there are specialists like the guys from performance pixel who are specialized on creating high performing and engaging uh, social ads and that gives me again inspiration to create new stuff yeah those are pretty boring ads yeah to be honest but i hope i can test the message first before i create the more high engaging ones this is still part of my idea validation concept now that that is an evil content plan this is what i wish more NGOs, more people who really have a good purpose that they are driving, that they have, that they consider where people are coming from, what the customer journey really are, what all of the pieces of the customer journey where you need content from before they start with the social media spam. In my opinion, social media has only one purpose, to continuously create content in order to find more resonating messages than I had before. And I want them to find their place in the evergreen customer journey and to, to delight and, and give value to the customers that I'm serving. But it's just a content rabbit hole on, on, on social media. And, and I, I use it to, to find those exceptional posts, like one out of a hundred I'm super happy with. Okay, that is the evil content plan for now. Uh, let's switch back uh to the slides if, if you enjoyed this you can you can just grab everything on let me go back uh, on pirateskills.com slash evil dash plan and you can copy the complete mirror board by just clicking on the title we have the slides that i presented and each screenshot of those boards if you don't like to use miro in a slide presentation which you can download for free and you can re-watch this video and recommend this video to somebody else, which I would highly appreciate. And, and that's it for the evil content plan uh, for tonight. I hope we can get, get the good guys some more power to get their message out and really drive impact and profit.